Becky and welcome back to my channel for an old Hollywood makeup tutorial. I've never covered Elizabeth Taylor. I'm obsessed with the 60s, but I often neglect the 50s. So I thought it would be fun to recreate her iconic 50s look. It's kind of my own spin on it. It's not a like historically accurate tutorial. I pulled some of my favorite looks that she's worn and just created my own version. But if there is any specific Elizabeth Taylor looks from some of her popular films, definitely let me know in the comments. This video is sponsored by Florisys and this makeup is stunning. I will have everything linked down below. And there's a ton of emeralds. Felt like it was very old Hollywood. I hope you guys like seeing these products in action and let's get into it. I finally cleared up my skin. I've moisturized. I don't do a lot of skincare on my channel, but let me know if you want to see more of that from me. The first product I'm using is the Hydrating Fluid Foundation from Florisys, which is made for dry skin. It has hydrocare essence, creating a very natural hydrated look for the base. My biggest tip with foundation is to shear it out on the back of your hand and then work it over your skin and also bring it down the neck. Just look at this finish. And while her makeup is bold, her skin still looked very fresh, so I'm not applying too many products to the skin, adding a touch of concealer where I need it. And because the lips are so important, I'm gonna prep them and this lip combo is one of my favorites for lip care. Florisys Ginseng Care Lip Scrub. The sugar gently exfoliates, so I'm rubbing it in that way. And just look at this packaging, it's so cool. Wiping this off and then following up with the Ginseng Care Lip Balm. It has a cooling sensation, it doesn't have a taste, which most of my lip masks that I've tried do, and it gets a little much to go to bed with them. So this is my top treatment now. And all the products are listed below. Letting that sit in time for powder. In old Hollywood films, the skin was always so flawless. I love the way vintage cameras look, how the powdered skin looks very hyper real. Screw HD. And the powder I'm using is the Florisys Flawless Jade Breathable Pressed Powder. I love this powder. It's talc free. It has a delicate silk protein powder formula and it's very silky smooth. My favorite part about it, it does control shine of course, but it's great for acne prone or sensitive skin and the powder puff feels very vintage. It's so nice to apply. I'm more heavily powdering for this look, but for every day I've been grabbing for the Flawless Jade Breathable Setting Powder. You can see with this powder, it's more effective in reducing dullness, restoring skin to velvet matte texture with brilliance because of the light mist purple, also controls shine all day with a soft matte finish. Powders from Florisys really are great. I've loved a lot of Chinese beauty brand powders and liquid liners specifically that I've tried. And in the 50s, the makeup style wasn't super contoured. I'm using the Eastern Beast Sculpting Makeup Palette. It's a four-in-one palette for a natural sculpting look. The formula is very buttery and easy to blend in. And inspired by Liz, I'm sculpting higher cheekbones. My cheeks are quite a bit rounder and a bit lower. And for nose, I didn't get it right. Usually I'm pretty proud of my nose contours, but I looked at too many inspiration pictures <laughs> for all at once. Sometimes if I'm referencing too many pictures, I don't do as good of a job. This highlight powder is gorgeous. I'm applying it from the palette, which has beautiful engravings, by the way. Like this is the prettiest makeup. You can see it applying very smooth. There's no glitter or anything. It just bounces off the skin and looks very lustrous. You can use any of these shades for an everyday eyeshadow look as well. And then brows, this is one of the main aspects to get a Liz inspired look. I'm gonna map out with a brunette brow pencil. I'm not gonna go in with black right away. I'm working with my own brow shape and just changing them slightly to get more of an Elizabeth vibe. Taking the arch a bit higher so that I can bring the tail down sharper and longer. Also raising the head of the brow. And then as I fill in, I'm gonna round out um, the front of the brow. Added some hair-like strokes, and then at the end, I'm gonna add a black shadow on a bit of a damp, tiny, tiny brush. My brows are a bit closer together, so I just went with that, but hers are a bit farther apart. And then for eyes, add a gray all over the lid. Don't bring it up into the crease. Her makeup was very focused on the liner, like most iconic 50s looks. For eyeliner, starting with a gel on a very small brush and creating a kitten flick. Applying very close to my lash line as well as tight lining the eye. This is great for hooded eyes. Having the focus more on the lash line and then setting the liner with powder will help to avoid transfer. And then from that little wing, I'm gonna bring the liner through the bottom lash line, connecting it, keeping it more focused on that outer corner, but I do add a couple little dots all the way to where my lashes start. 
Elizabeth Taylor had very full lashes. She had a genetic mutation of two sets of eyelashes, so double the amount of lashes than most of us have. This looks pretty, but I am gonna smoke it out and my cat would not stop meowing, so here he is on my lap doing the other eye and then smoking out that liner. Now the shadow is giving a bit of a blue-gray appearance, which is what I noticed in a lot of her pictures. But I did see a couple photos where it looked like there was some blue and copper. I know blue and green were makeup colors that were available in the 50s. She usually stuck to gray, but I wanted to play with this gorgeous eyeshadow palette and bring in a tiny bit of color, especially because I thrifted this 50s dress that has blue flowers in it and I wanted to add some. This is the Florisys Floral Engravings Butterfly Makeup Palette. All of Florisys makeup has very specific inspirations as an ode to various Chinese cultures. I'm really inspired by how much detail goes into everything there's a mix of matte and shimmers here. I started with the center light shade to give a highlight to the brow bone. And then under the lash line, I decided to add in some copper. Added some subtle blue to the eyeliner. And some peach in the crease to help blend. The three main shades I used, and I did it subtly, but they are very pigmented. And in a lot of photos, it looked like Liz Taylor was wearing white eyeliner. I decided to go with a peach just because my eyes are already quite rounder and bigger. I didn't want it to look too painted and doll-like, but you can totally go with a white eyeliner if you want to make your eyes appear larger. Now for eyeliner, this is the Pine Suit Precision Defined Eyeliner, a 50s line here. I wanted to bring in that crisp line after I smoked out the gel and the shadows adding some dots along the bottom lash line again, and because I don't have two sets of natural lashes, I'm gonna go with falsies. These are wispy, but still natural looking. I went back and forth if I wanted to go with a very orange red or more of a classic red. Elizabeth Taylor wore so many shades of red, so really just finding a red that you feel comfortable in. And remember to keep your cupid's bow in a V for a classic lip shape. These liquid lipsticks are very lightweight. I don't usually go for liquid lips, but it is a nourishing formula. I brought in a bit of gloss. You could use a balm for more of an authentic 50s lipstick finish. Can't forget blush. I went with this coral shade and her blush helped balance her bold lips. I don't think I ended up looking exactly like Liz Taylor or anything, but I do feel like a glamorous 50s movie star with her essence, of course. Liz Taylor inspired makeup is so fun because she has such a distinct brow look and the lips that everyone knows who the reference is without having to do too many steps. If you want to use this for a costume or you're a super fan, you could always add the beauty mark on the right side of her cheek and go with the black curly wig. I love this length personally, but you can go for something more cropped too. And from researching Liz Taylor, of course she had makeup artists, but she often did her own makeup and a quote from her <laughs> stated that she used to sit in a steaming hot bath after she did her makeup to set her face, which makes sense because with powders, they do look better after you have some moisture and like it's worn in. I'll just stick to setting spray, but my makeup did stay put. Everything is linked down below if you wanna check out the products used. Thanks again to Florisys for sponsoring this video. I absolutely loved unboxing all these products. And if you want to see more vintage inspired glamour, you might like this Lily Collins Met Gala tutorial that was inspired by Sharon Tate and Priscilla Presley. The emerald jewelry really reminded me of Elizabeth Taylor as well, so you might like that one. Or check out this Jean Shrimpton Yardley ad that I recreated. I have some real vintage products in that video and hopefully you'll keep on watching.